This is 13-year-old Najib Ali undergoing lung tests at a hospital in Athens. Explaining her son's injuries, his mother Fatun says it's taken a year to see specialist consultants, the first since they arrived in Greece. Uh, generally, my son feels like someone is strangling him. The family's home near the Syrian city of Homs was hit by a bomb. Najib was so badly injured he was left unable to walk. Najib is already in a wheelchair, but doctors have discovered new problems. He is told he needs an urgent, even life-saving operation. The teenager has the kidneys of an old man and is facing the prospect of renal failure. He's got a serious urological problem that needs to be dealt with um, pretty soon uh, in order not to jeopardize his kidney function and not having him end up in, in dialysis, something that will be uh, very debilitating. The charity Goodwill Caravan is also supporting Ibrahim Jabara and his wife, who have six children. Two of them, they say, are unrecognizable since a chemical attack in Raqqa in Syria. But they are not the only young victims of the Syrian war, now in Greece, needing medical help. There are no official figures, but charities working here estimate there are several thousand high-risk migrant children requiring specialist paediatric intervention. <laughs> Omar rolls round the floor like a toddler. He is eight years old but has no speech. ولكن لما بعد أربع سنوات بعد الضرب هاي تغير وأنتوا عرفتوا كيف يعني شلون شفت شفت شلون كيف حالته يعني حتى مشيته حتى وضعه نومته ومش طبيعي بالمرة يعني يعني إحنا عم نعاني من مش فقط من الأولاد كلهم يعني بنعاني أكثر شيء من جماعة هو اللي عن حالته شوي مأساوية بالمرة. They were sheltering in a school with around 60 or 70 other families. We can't independently verify their claim, but the parents say Syrian doctors told them their twin sons, Omar and Mohammed, are the victims of sarin gas. <laughs> كريهة أنا أول مرة يعني أدش إلي عايشة أول مرة بشم هيك ريحة ريحة بتخلي الصدر يعني القلب يسكر عن جد ريحة مو يعني إذا شميتيها أنت عن بعد إنه بتفقد الوعي خالص نهائيا يعني ما فيك يعني الكبار ما بتحمله شون عاد الصغار نجيب still has shrapnel in his spine and an X-ray an old X-ray back from his hospitalization that shows the skeletal injuries and also the lung injuries that the boy had. He's been a paraplegic for four years. His family pushed him in a wheelchair across Syria, then paid people smugglers to take them in a dinghy to Europe in the hope they would find a doctor to help him walk again. <laughs> ابني احساسه من صورته وتحت ابني ما عاد يمشي ابني صارت الذاكره معه كثير تعبانه ببقى انا ام ام تص ابني كيف عم بتعذب يعني مقابلي وانا مو قادره اني اعمل شيء As we speak to Najib's parents in the corridor outside Omar has arrived with his father they are similarly beholden to anyone prepared to pay for or give them free health care.
But today is not their day when they're told nobody can see them and to go home again. <laughs> For most migrants, arriving in Europe isn't as simple as just starting a new life. They bring with them the injuries and trauma of years of war, and most are ill-equipped to deal with it. Hundreds of thousands of migrants have passed through Greece, but tens of thousands are now trapped because gateway borders to the rest of Europe are closed. After a hard winter, the days are getting warmer, which for most people makes survival easier, but not everyone. We sit in the shade to meet an 11-year-old boy who can't face direct sunlight. Manan is pictured with his sister, Natalia, a few years ago. This is him now. He suffered third-degree burns to much of his body and needs plastic surgery. After fleeing conflict in Syria, fire broke out in his family's tent in a migrant camp in Greece. So he was burned everywhere apart from his legs and his chest. Clothes. What was he wearing on his Clothes. He had clothes. He took the clothes off because it burned. Volunteer Salam al Din has been helping the family and shows us a video of the night of the fire. You can hear the screams of Manan's mother. She had to choose which of her children to try to rescue from the flames first. She saved Natalia, sparing at least one child more serious injury. Nobody got inside to save the baby. The mother jumped inside and brought the baby. No men got inside there to get the baby out. She took her son out. Volunteer Salam has witnessed the arrival of thousands of migrants. More than a third of those who've come to Greece are children. Charities say Greece can't cope with the numbers needing medical help and want other countries to share the burden. The Greek people have been wonderful, but because there is such um, an exodus of refugees coming to Greece, the medical services are overstretched. For Najib, another day at a different hospital to see a neurologist about his spine. Do you feel anything here? Okay. So this is uh, a sort of uh, in involuntary movement. It's called clonus, clonus beat. Um, it is a sign that his uh, spinal cord has been severed, and uh, this is an automatic movement. Really, he does not have any any conscious movement of his legs. The family face a roller coaster of emotions to try to improve and save Najib's life. I'm going to start calling now and you know, find a way through. There's relief when the doctor says he'll try to put them in touch with a kidney expert. But despair over the long term prognosis. Do you think that there's any chance he could walk again? I think this is this is very slim. As Najib battles injuries from four years ago, in the last few weeks, the family's hometown has been hit again in a fresh strike. Najib's grandparents lived in the house next door. Again reliant on the goodwill of strangers, Najib's father is helped by a passerby to get his son down the hospital steps. 
It's now over a year since the family arrived in Greece and they still don't know when or if Najib will get the treatment he needs.